you've put yep, your dinner right. away, you've taken your glasses off your <laughs> Yeah, all set to go head, now. All set to go. Yeah. Um, and and what, I, what I liked here is that, you know, the little segue is that, you know, Andy talked about this, this um, bringing coaches together and talked about, you know, creating a community of practice. And I think that, I think that may have resonated with you a little bit. So I've got a simple yeah. question to start with. As a participant on Coaching for Impact, what had the biggest impact on your coaching? What really stood out for you? To be honest, I think it was probably the connections that I was able to make with coaches. Um, often we find ourselves quite isolated. You're coaching a school team, you're in your gym by yourself, there's no one else around. You, you come off with a struggle and you're not sure kind of where to go. Um, whereas this network um, and this and and being part of this program created a network of coaches from a whole different range of sports. Like there were netball coaches that I talked to, rugby coaches, swimming coaches that did um, para para athletes. Um, like there were some phenomenal people, and just be able to share your struggles with them and get their feedback and mm -hmm. stuff and how to solve issues that you're facing. Um, one particular thing that I remember was when we had our residential camp in September last year, I was kind of had started my junior program with school and I was finding this one kid that was super talented and like, but was really hot and cold. And I was like, honestly, like, how can I get this kid to just be hot all the time? Yeah. And I was struggling so hard. Like I'd, I'd come up with my own ideas and I tried them and nothing worked. So we, and then we had this residential camp um, we came together. I asked them about the coach, and they're like, "Hey, have have you tried this?" I'm like, "Oh, I didn't even thought about that. Why have you tried this? Oh my goodness, that's so obvious. Why didn't I think about this?" And just having some fresh eyes, people that mm. don't know anything about volleyball, were able to kind of give me insights and say, "Hey, maybe there's other things going on. Maybe you can look into this way or whatever." So that was so that was pretty cool. And I went back to my own environment, like did like a couple Try of some stuff. Did, tried some stuff um and it, like we we got to north islands at the end of the year and and he was successful he was great he was a great player for us and do you uh -huh. do you remember what some of the tips were i'm so intrigued do you i think because i was trying to focus too much on the volleyball what can i do in the gym but they were like hey okay. like what's what's going on at home like is it is it worth having a chat to the his year level dean and see if there's something else going on maybe maybe he's having issues with his friends um mm stuff like that hey have you got in touch with the parents um and like all, all of those sorts of things so yeah nice. was, yeah definitely definitely a good one very cool and and you know there, there there's research out there that indicates that coaches or like learn from a, a wide range of sources and yeah. that you know there's the formal learning so it's delivered by a knowledgeable professional educator um, it's a course it's an award then there's the non-formal, which is what kind of happens outside of the framework. Mm. It's kind of like this webinar. And then there's the, the informal, the, and, and I know Andy alluded to it, the reflection, the mentoring, communities of practices where coaches can share. That's get a feel for what coaching really is. And so do you have a comment on, you know, on that formal, not informal, what, what you see as a valuable balance yeah I think there's definite benefits like there was I loved having the guest speakers come in because that was able to give me some practical oh, theories behind stuff that we were learning and all that sort of thing but personally from this course the the most of the value that I got came from just yarning to other coaches um, and a lot of that informal informal conversation because you pick up different little little tidbits and obviously as as Andy mentioned before there was range of different experiences and some people were coaching at a national level and you'd you'd be able to have a chat with them and see how they work with things and, and they often invited um coaches in so we had a hockey hockey New Zealand coach come in a rugby New Zealand coach come in and they would just come and have a yarn with us about their experience at coaching and um yeah it was so I, I personally I enjoyed that and got the most out of those those informal kind of conversations but definitely still some really important learning and listening to those academics and and then you can kind of hash it out a little bit with yeah. those, those take what you want out of it nice yeah very yeah. cool and is there do you have any other examples of how the informal discussion with peers has had a benefit on your coaching practice I think probably more just the when I come to an issue, I can't solve it myself. 
having that network of people to come and yep. come and do. Yeah. And do you still have that network? Ah, uh, yes. So there are coaches from the program that I'm still in touch with. Nice. Um, we've got like a little Facebook Facebook group chat where we chuck some things in. And I was part of the northern group. Um, the other two coaches here were part of the southern group. So nice. unfortunately, they're not in it, but I think they've got something similar. So, cool. and then obviously there's some other coaches in my region as well, which are volleyball coaches. Um, and we I have conversations with them all the time at, at the local comps and kind of yeah nice. get, get the insight from them as well and and obviously chuck in little tidbits of my own and try and help out when I can <laughs> yeah definitely and I think there's a real value to having that community of practice where you can gain pers- others perspective because we can we find ourselves we can find ourselves in a silo and doing it our way and our way only. And so to see and pick up other perspectives is, is really cool. Yeah. Very nice. Awesome. And um, you mentioned the other day, you talked about um, something else you picked up during coaching for impact was around having courageous conversations. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you want to yeah. share what you picked up and how that's had an impact on your coaching practice? Yeah. So I think courageous conversations was never kind of something of my strong suit but it's inevitable you're going to have to have them um it could be with athletes that you've got it could be having a conversation with a parent um just say hey look your son's not performing or or for me son's not performing I'm coaching boys um or it could even be the school environment or your your regional association um and so it's inevitable you you can't avoid them it's it's a part of coaching so being able to manage them and kind of understand what it's like for the other person on the on the receiving end of that courageous conversation it was quite helpful Mm -hmm. so in our group we had a couple of we had a lawyer um and a person that worked in HR so they kind of in their day-to-day jobs were having these courageous conversations Mm. So they kind of chucked in some little tidbits. So for me, I think one of the things was people prefer to have those conversations face-to-face. So whether it be after a team selection, um, hey, look, you didn't make the team. I know you're probably really gutted right now, but here are some things you can work on. Like I do see potential in you. Kind of give them some ways to, some practical ways to to build on that. I Mm -hmm. think is a lot better having that conversation face to face rather than over an email or yeah or just here's the selection list oh I don't see my name on it that sucks yeah yeah I've been blindsided I, I know I know yeah. what that like from a from an athlete's point of view as well um it's it's pretty tough when you don't get any feedback from your coach and you're like cool how do I how can I progress how can I make mm. this time or stuff like and, that so. And if we know, and like if Andy alluded to that importance of connection and the relationship side of things, like yeah. it's a really good opportunity to strengthen that relationship. Yeah. So having those courageous conversations you talked about, doing it face to face, is there any other tips that you could give listeners on the call around having those courageous conversations? That- um, bit of a this is a bit of an education thing too, but have a bit of a compliment sandwich. So <laughs> you've got to make sure rather than just going negative, 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 negative. Um, start with the positives like so hey I really love how you're committed Um, like if if you're saying that someone didn't make the team I love how you're really committed um, and really keen to give things a go and then kind of go to a negative thing unfortunately you haven't made the team this year um, but there's potential in the future if you keep working here's some here's some things that would be a would good next steps for you to improve on and expect that once they hear the negative news, the, oh, I didn't make the team or, oh, I'm starting on the bench kind of mm. conversation, um, that they're going to hear a little bit of white noise for a little bit. So yes. don't do your kind of big juicy stuff at the front because they're not probably actually going to catch they're it. They're not going to catch it afterwards. That's a really good tip. I like that. And I like, there's something I want to want to add here. Because I, I, same thing, courageous conversations. I have it with players, with parents and so forth all yeah. the time. And I like, I like to talk to the, the values of the team and I like to talk to players actions and behaviors as opposed to singling out the person or the player Um, and I also use a model um, that I refer to as character and performance so my expectation of the group that I coach is um, I'll try and draw this on my screen but think of four quadrants you've got one axis is character one axis is performance so in the top quadrant you're performing well and your character is spot on 
you're a great fit for the team and you score lots of goals for us. Um, so you're a role model, you're a leader, you're in the starting lineup, bam, that's, that's pretty, pretty simple. And then you've got, you're performing well, you car- you know, you're, you're playing well, but you're not quite a good fit for the team. So I'm going to praise you on your performance, but I'm going to challenge you on your character. The other quadrant being your performance isn't quite up to scratch, but your character's top notch. You're a great fit for the team and we need to have you in this environment for our culture. So again, I praise you on your character. I challenge you on your performance. Um, and I share this with the group and I tell them, I would really hope that people don't ever end up in that, that mm. poor character, poor performance space. But if they do, it's, it's less about, I need you to perform better. It's more about, I need you to, to, to look at the values of our team and how you can improve your character and be a good fit in this environment. And then we can build the performance aspect on top of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Before I move on, I know you might chime in a little bit later with some stuff that Natalia is sharing, but um, yeah, and yeah. Before, before then, is there anything else from Coaching for Impact that resonated with you that you want to I share? Think, on? Yeah, so when I first started this program, I came in I was in a bit in a bit of a rough situation coaching wise I was struggling I felt like I was just battling all the time and I wasn't kind of getting any re- re- like reward or recognition for kind of the effort and the time I was putting in um and then we had a conversation about the sphere of influence and we kind of talked about how you've got the kind of your circle of control to start with so that's mm-hmm. you first and foremost you can control entirely what you do and like your athletes to a point. And then there's the next one, which is the circle of influence and how you can, how you can kind of grow that. And the aim is to try and grow that because you can actually make some changes and implement some changes. And then there's the next bigger circle, which is the circle of concern. Mm. Found myself trying to change the things and people in my um, circle of concern, which you can't control. Like there's just no, there's, they're just not able, they're not going to listen to you. I was the little dog. They were the big dogs. Nothing was going to change. Mm. And I found I spent a lot of time and energy doing that. Um, that's draining. Yeah, that's really, that's, that's really, really that's draining. And yeah. For everyone's benefit as well. If we think um, the circle of influence is things that you can control around, like your health or your children or problems at work. Whereas the circle of concern are things you have little or no control over national debt the weather and so forth so you feel free to put that into your own context but kind of gaining an awareness of the areas where we expend energy yeah and so we want to expend it in those areas of Mm. of influence and that had a massive impact on on your coaching because since I was like oh my goodness light bulb I'm wasting so much time and energy trying to do these things that I can't actually control So why don't I just do, why don't I put my effort into doing something I can control and trying Mm. to grow that like sphere sphere of influence and actually make some positive changes there. And since then, I think I've started to slowly, like it's it's hard going still, Mm. trying to slowly grow that circle of influence and make positive changes in my environment. So, yeah. Very, very cool. Nice. And um, if anyone, um, I forget his name, the guy who the seven habits of, some Covey or something and I could share that after the call but that little piece around sphere of influence is is a good conversation to have and I can share a YouTube link and then there's probably another YouTube link that's that's by a um a a guy that I'll share that's quite funny um, but relates to this really nicely about how how we what we worry about and we spend energy on Mm -hmm. things we really can't control um and you see it a lot in coaching which is which is cool hey thank you for your time Rihanna no doubt we'll hear from you um, a little bit later in um in the call potentially um and uh, anyone has any questions for brianna about anything but in particular around that sphere of influence you know having courageous conversations um and that 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 informal learning community of coaching space um feel free to ask that question in the chat we can do that um, near the end of the call thank you brianna all good star and um, again, people throw comments into the chat, their, their take on some of these things and ask questions so that we can 